Hello and welcome back to another episode of Faith and Freedom. I'm Garrett and I am a libertarian. I am a Christian libertarian. Uh, the verse I picked out for sort of the theme of this show comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not, yourself, do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of mm-hmm. slavery. And in this passage, Paul was talking to the Galatians in terms of not being yoked again by slavery to the Jewish law uh, in regards to people who are trying to Judaize the early Christian religion. Uh, I want to talk today a little bit more about the drug war, which I talked about last time, but I want to talk about it this time in specific reference to the unfortunate police encounters uh, that we've had recently and and throughout the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, The most recent one, I don't recall the gentleman's name, but the situation was he was in his vehicle and we don't have all the details and I'm not going to speculate about the details. One of the facts that we do know in this case is that the police were there responding to uh, some drug dealing activity. And this is just about the case. This is the case for a a large proportion of these police encounters that end uh, with with someone dying, usually a person that the police are are trying to take in custody. Uh, When you think back to the Breonna Taylor situation, they were serving a no-knock warrant because they suspected drug activity. Uh, They got the wrong address or, uh, you know, there was a mix-up and and the results are unfortunate. Now, what I want to argue is that these types of situations would not be happening as much without the war on drugs. And I alluded to what my solution was for the war on drugs, and that's a complete and and total end to it. And that would mean uh, a free market solution for both uh, drug use and and drug rehabilitation to where, yes, drugs would be put um, in stores that adults could could purchase Mm -hmm. them. Um, without being arrested. This would result in a decrease in the price for drugs. This would also um, uh, decrease the amount of of crime surrounding drugs. So let's just focus in a little bit more on what we mean about the war on drugs and drug use. So essentially the war on drugs is a uh, hyperactive government and hyper militant police forces trying to stop the specific sin of people uh, either changing and or dulling their mind with some sort of foreign substance. Uh, It's very parallel to alcohol use, and we did try this same uh, strategy to to stop um, alcohol use, which is the same sin. And I'm not advocating for drug use or alcohol use. I think the scripture is clear that we as Christians should uh, keep a sober, sharp state of mind. And, and when we change our mind and, and dull it to where we are not aware and we are not um, aware of the blessings that we're receiving from God, uh, it affects our prayer life. So I'm by no means advocating drug use. I just think the way that we're handling it uh, in this country in terms of that it is a sin and in and of itself, it's not a crime into which persons or are, are property are damaged. And it's, it's costly for, for us to, to deal with it this way because the resources to, to fight this war are taken from taxpayers and by nature this, this prohibition uh, causes violence just like the prohibition of alcohol caused violence. We would have never had an Al Capone or a Sonny Whoever or any of those uh, gangsters who are incredibly wicked, violent men without alcohol prohibition. And we see ourselves in the same situation today. We are creating uh, violent individuals because these drugs are worth more money than they should be because they're illegal. And the reason that we're seeing more police encounters is because the police uh, need to keep up with the uh, uh, drug sale activity which is driven by the demand, right? So we'll always have some sort of demand for 
narcotics, just like we always have some sort of demand for alcohol. And it's unfortunate. Uh, there is a place for, for alcohol. Some people can successfully use it in moderation. Uh, there are certain drugs that are illegal that some people can use uh, in, mo in moderation and not damage anyone else's person or property. So what we have now is we have an enforcement of, of these laws that are essentially stopping people from possessing plants um, and it's leading to encounters between police and people who are trying to buy and sell these drugs because there's a lucrative market for it. So if you take that lucrative market away and it wouldn't be lucrative if it was legal drugs can be produced very cheaply the worth the, the street value of illegal drugs is all because they're illegal it's not that they're hard or expensive to produce you're paying for or the price is inflated by the black market mm -hmm. you might think that the price of drugs coming down would be a bad thing but as i touched on in my other video the availability really isn't the issue. Those drugs are available right now, and they're available in multiple different locations. If you made a market for drug use, you'd be able to track where they're located better and the individuals that used them. Uh, so getting back to the police encounters, if, if we took away the option for these young men who often come from inner cities and in, in underprivileged circumstances, if you took away that temptation for them to get into um, buying and selling drugs, they would have to choose a different path um, besides that. And they would probably pick a more productive path than uh, standing on the street corner and selling drugs and eventually potentially getting into violent conflicts with, with police officers. Um, another thing that would end if we legalized drugs would be the music industry, specifically the inner city rap music industry, who if you can bear to listen to that uh, music, you'll notice that the majority of the subject matter revolves around selling drugs, using drugs, and that whole drug dealing lifestyle. Now, when the people who are selling drugs are working at CVS, that takes the romance and that takes the allure um, out of that whole situation and that leaves these people that are producing this disgusting rap music who often lead uh, young men and women in, in bad situations to that life, it essentially puts them out of business because they no longer have the subject matter of, of drug dealing and the romance and the drama that currently surrounds that industry. So you essentially take the cool out of the drug industry. It's not cool anymore when it comes in a white box from CVS. And it's not cool anymore when you walk past CVS and you see the type of people right there in broad daylight um, purchasing those drugs. So I believe by taking these measures, um, treating drug use more of a healthcare issue, an addiction issue, and, and treating it with, with counseling, uh, with emotional counseling, with biblical counseling, and with more compassion than uh, locking someone in jail or arresting them, or unfortunately sometimes uh, those situations leading to their death, um, we should consider a different route of how we handle the sin of, of substance abuse. So thanks for joining me on Faith and Freedom. I'll see you again on the next episode.